What's up, So Hills kids? Welcome to Sundays. I hope you guys are doing great. I know I am. I am excited about today's lesson. We're talking about Noah, right? We've all heard of Noah. But we'll look at it from a different angle than we have before. Um, but before we get into that, I've got a challenge for you guys, okay? Instead of a game, I'm going to do a challenge, okay? With your parents' permission, go get a bucket or a big tub and fill it up with water. And go find a ton of things in your house that you think will sink or float and try it. Drop them in the tub and see what happens. See which one sinks and see which one floats. And then know which ones you're surprised about. Maybe turn it into a game. See who can guess the most right answers. Who guesses if it sinks or floats correctly the most. So pause this video, go see what sinks and go see what floats, and then after that you can unpause and we'll jump right into the story for today. I'll see you guys after that. Adam and Eve had many children and grandchildren. Their grandchildren had children and grandchildren, and people began to fill the earth. God looked at all the people on earth and saw that they were choosing to sin more and more. Every person's thoughts were evil, and God was sad that he made people. God decided to send a flood to destroy all the creatures on the earth. But God showed favor to a man named Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He followed God. God warned Noah about the flood. He told Noah to make an ark to save himself, his family, and all kinds of animals. God told Noah exactly how to make the ark. And he said that he would make an agreement or covenant with Noah and his family. Noah did everything that God commanded. When the ark was finished, Noah went inside with his family and the animals, and God shut the door. The rain started and water rose from the ground. Now the ark floated on top of the water. The water rose higher and higher until all of the mountains were covered. Everyone inside the ark was safe. Finally, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped and the water started to go down. Noah waited inside the ark until the ground was dry. Then God told Noah to bring all the people and animals out of the ark. So Noah did. Noah built an altar and gave an offering to the Lord. God promised to never completely flood the earth again. God told Noah and his family to spread out over the earth and fill it with people. God placed a rainbow in the sky as a special sign of the covenant that he made with Noah. Every time Noah and his family saw the rainbow, they would know God remembered his promise that he had made with all the living creatures on the earth. God rescued Noah and his family from the flood. The story of Noah points ahead to a greater rescue. God's son, Jesus, the only perfect righteous one, came to take the punishment for our sin. By trusting in him, we are saved from the punishment our sin deserves. Isn't that story crazy? So we've jumped ahead a little bit. We talked about sin, we talked about how it entered the world, and now we get this jump, and all of a sudden there's people everywhere. You see, they lived out the command. They were fruitful, they multiplied, they had kids, and their kids had kids. And we don't really know how long this period in the Bible was where people um, began growing and the population grew. So we don't know how many people, we don't know how long it was, but we do know that they were not good. They were not good people. They did not honor God and they didn't honor each other. It was, it was not a good place at all. There was full of sin, murder, theft, and all of these evil things all going on. And so God decides to take action, right? This is kind of a scarier story because we see that God is also a judgment God, right? He has a judgment, right? He doesn't like sin. 
Um, and and we, we like to focus on the happy-go-lucky part of God, but there's also a part where there is very real punishment for sin. And we have to acknowledge both of those. But once again, this story shows so much grace. So most of you guys might have heard this story before about Noah, and he brought the animals onto the ark, right? Two by two, and then some he brought seven, and they all got on the ark, and a huge flood came in, and only Noah and those that were on the boat were saved. And it's crazy, right? God flooded the whole earth. Now, what does that mean for us? What does this story from thousands of years ago that's been retold by countless cultures have to do with us? Well, when we look at it, we really see God's grace in all of it. You see, God got Noah on the ark. He told him, he warned him, and Noah's obedience is what saved him. His faith in God, ultimately, uh, and God's provision saved him. Him. And so he built this ark and he got up. And if we look at no, uh, Genesis chapter 8, we can see some really cool things that God begins to do. So it starts off in verse 1 and it says, But God remembered Noah, all the wild animal and livestock with him in the boat. And he sent a wind across the earth, and the floodwaters began to recede. So God remembers, right? He remembers that Noah's on there. He has not forgotten. And he sends some, some winds, some things to start preceding the water. And so the water recedes, and you know the famous story where he sends out the doves, and some return, and one does not. And it's a good sign, because that means the dove has found dry land. And so um, they stay in their boat for a while, but if we go all the way down to 820, right, Noah gets out of the boat. They get out on dry land. The flood is over. And what's really cool is if we look at it in chapter 8, verse 20 of Genesis, it says, And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and made sacrifices and burnt offerings, and the animals and the birds had been approved for that purpose. So Noah's first act was to worship God. His first thought in his head was, let me get out, let me build an altar, and let me worship God. You see, ultimately, God was the one that provided for Noah. God's grace saved Noah. God's love saved Noah. And if we think about the ark, it's ultimately kind of an example of who Jesus was, right? We were drowning in our sin, weren't we? We made bad choices. We still make bad choices. But there is a boat, right? And that boat's name is Jesus, and he will save us from the waters. He's going to save us from our sins. He's going to save us from all the wrong that we've done. So when we are struggling with sin, when we're struggling with, with things going on, we feel like we don't measure up, we feel like we're not good enough, remember what God promised, right? Remember the rainbow, that God's still there, that he loves us, he remembers us, and ultimately remember the cross where Jesus died for our sins. So even if we don't feel like we measure up, we know that in God, despite our sin and our failure and the very real consequences of those sins, we are still loved and we are still held close by Jesus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, the flood, right? Noah's Ark, it's got a lot of different takes on it, right? There's these happy, cheery looks, and then there's sad, dreary looks as well. But ultimately, we remember that God loves us just as much as he loves Noah. Because of Jesus, we can access God now, and we can be confident in who we are. And despite our failures, God still loves us. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see y'all next week with our next lesson. Bye.